Hey there, everyone. I hope you are all doing good. Stasma here. Welcome to this new episode of Schlappy Patching. In today's episode, we have a new guest, the Mug Slicer by our friend at Befaco. I'm actually wearing a Befaco sweatshirt right now. So far, I'm not using it, and I'm going to make a listen to the basic patch that I've done so far. The whole patch is driven by a drum machine, the 880 that's on the side, which you can hear processed through the angle grinder. for some uh, dirt. And I have this uh, sequencing thing going on with the 4-bit system, two nibblers, and the bit mix. So what's happening in the sound is one static waveform of the tree body. Simple sine wave. Going to this bit fold. This is it with no CV. Then it goes to the angle grinder. Low pass filter mode. with no CV. I like the combo, the beat fold into the angle grinder because the beat fold adds a lot of harmonics. The angle grinder can be a nice gentle filter. Right now I'm using the stepped output of the nibblers to control both this guy to create that pattern also the filter on the angle grinder. This nibbler is giving the modulation of the beat fold, and this one gives the modulation to the angle grinder. This is cool. And this is how I usually modulate the things inside the Schlappy engineering system. But when I was better testing the beat fold, I add the mug slicer in another case with that beat fold prototype and I found out a pretty fun patch with them together. So if I take the output of the beat fold straight to the output this pretty nasty sound. As you can hear, each output is a little bit different. So one thing that I thought would be great would be to use a switch, patching all the outputs. And so instead of having uh, lots of modulation on the CV, basically just alternate between all the outputs. So let's patch it up to the mug slicer, as the mug slicer can be either a sequencer or a switch, or a bit of both at the same time. So I'm going to send the clock from the drum machine to the mug slicer. At the clock input. I will tell it to start when receiving a clock. It works. This is good. So bring the big the beat in the background so we have a reference. 
So how does a switch work? A switch does have a certain number of steps or addressable locations and a few inputs and one output. They're sometimes bi-directional like this one. What we're going to do right now is to, instead of plugging here, the output is going to be COM HI-HO. And I'm going to use those inputs over here. So on the first step, we have this the fold output and we can adjust its level. The one that is the, always the lowest is out 8 as it doesn't fold, it's just a squared out version of the input. So it's a great it's a good one let's say for a starter. Then let's fold. In the middle of this we could use some of the other waveforms of the tree body that we are not using. Even why not one of the auto oscillator in ratio mode. Let's patch this to a VCA. And let's use again the output of the bitmix that I was using earlier to trigger the envelopes. Remove this and also let's make this seven step so we get more different formula. One interesting thing you can do with this would be to send a very slow voltage here. and or still further process this through a filter. Let's send the output of the VCA to a filter, even though it's not the usual way of doing things it work in that specific patch. With a more classic switch, like a dub for one, or just like a simple four to one switch, which is quite common, you cannot use all the output at the same time. Yet you can do some pretty fun stuff. Also, it should be noted that there is no note sequencing at all in this patch. The oscillator just remains at the same frequency. Well, we have the impression that there is at least octave jumps, which is fun.
Sir, we'll leave you on that funky patch. See you next time. Hi, friends at Befaco. <laughs> <laughs>